Hello everyone, this is LaToya of Infinite Nature and I am back with a new video. I'm doing a book review on, it's upside down guys, on The Conjure Woman by Afia Atakora. Hopefully I can get through this whole video without any interruptions. I was on the other side of the park where it had better lighting, but it was just too many people around. And I have to, you know, still look around my surroundings, making sure nobody's crazy. You know, you know what I mean? You know, I just gotta be, you know, I gotta watch myself. You feel me? But yeah, so I moved to the other side. So hopefully there won't be no interruptions. Hopefully my phone doesn't shut off or anything. Just like there's people walking right behind me. And I have to like just look up. So if you see me looking up, looking to my side, looking wherever, it's because I'm just watching my surroundings. So here's the book Conjure Woman by Afia Atakora. And this is a fiction, a not fiction is a novel. And this book was very good. And I had to remind myself that I'm reading a fiction book because it felt so real. But the reason why is because this author definitely did her research. And even here, she has a note that I'm gonna read out loud to you so you, to give you insight. Immeasurable recognition is owed to the people whose real histories inform the fictional stories that make up Conjure Woman. I drew largely from slave narratives, a folk history of slavery in the United States from interviews as conducted in the 1930s by the Work Projects Administration. To find voice and flavor, curses and cures, so too is great recognition owed to Lucy Zimmerman. Arnaka Westcott and Betsy Harris, as well as countless unnamed, unknown women who indignities and suffering under the medical care of J. Marion Sims were detailed in his own The Story of My Life. I offer gratitude to the African American men and women who, through their written narratives, through interviews or amanuensis, willingly, willingly and, uh, and at times unwillingly share their experiences within the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade and its long lasting aftermath okay so that's the author's note that i read right here and then here is afia right there and afia atakora was born in the united kingdom and raised in new jersey where she now lives she graduated from New York University and has an MFA from Columbia University, where she was the recipient of the De, De Alba Fellowship. Her fiction has been nominated for a Pushcart Prize, and she was a finalist for the Hurston Wright Award for College Writers. So, she is very talented, very gifted in what she does, and um, I looked up. I looked up her. I looked up information on her in this book and she had an interview that I didn't get a chance to read in, to in totality. But what I did see is that she um, she initially wrote this book in nine months and then she went back of course and then put in her details and probably research and things of that nature into the book. This book definitely was entertaining for me and interesting and I learned a lot and some things I was aware of, um, but it was just still very disheartening some of the things that I heard, I mean read, and then there was things that was just so amazing. Um, one of the things that just stands out is just a reminder of how resilient um, African you know, people are, regardless of where you live how resilient we are, how powerful we are, how gifted we are, how talented we are, how we've gone through so much and endured so much, and we're still here, you know what I mean? And the more you learn about who you are, you know, no one can tell you anything. And that's why it's so important for black people in particular to read books. Because especially when you understand the nature of how intentionally reading and writing was prohibited you know unless you were opening it up a bible reading and writing was prohibited and even with this book that i'm reading now called um 
capitalism and slavery in the book and i'm gonna do a book review on that but some of the things that that i'm reading in that book and that one's more of like a history more focusing on like how slavery was started based upon like a from an economic standpoint and what i'm learning is that you know racism is a side effect of slavery you know what i mean but at the same time it's just how when you look at how black people were they were you know were treated back then like we were just straight up product like we were just straight up just like just when like we weren't human that's how the, that's how they treated our ancestors and that's what and that and we see the side effects of that now current times of that and it just makes you understand the psychology of the people that enslaved when you read that book capitalism and <laughs> capitalism and slavery you understand why some people are so oblivious or act like they're so oblivious who how people try to act so far removed from the realities of this of slavery and how it has impacted us on a global level and that's why the things that are, that has happened this past year didn't just impact the United States it impacted us globally because this shit is, excuse my language this stuff is global this is not an American issue this is a global issue and when and unless we get real and we get honest about the realities of this and when people go and dig deep and understand the psychology of it and the psychology of how it's in you then change, things will change things will change but people got to be honest people got to be real about it it's crazy and the justifications that people had for enslaving people the justifications claiming that oh i'm getting really off track like oh you know this i'm a humanitarian but yeah we slavery we need you know but justify slavery in the same breath claim you're more, the most religious person ever but justify slavery you know what i mean it's just the 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 the, the cognitive dissonance the 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 it just doesn't make any sense it's just like when you when you look at it you have to be like yo there is some mental dysfunction when people cannot see the chaos of what's going on <laughs> globally and that's why a lot of stuff happened this year you know as far as with the riots and all of that craziness this was this is a this is a global issue global issue you know a lot of things was built on the blood of others in the most inhumane ways and until people can be real about it on all levels and acknowledge it and, and and you know atone for it even if you didn't do it but if your ancestors did it because there's some people that will admit that they that they have reaped the benefits directly because they literally their family had plantations when you can get to the point where you can get acknowledge that and be real about it okay then we can make some real change but i i just got really off off base <laughs> off topic okay but i just had to say that because it's just like when you really when you know who you are at your core when you know who you are at your core when you open up a book and read and read your life change and in that book that I'm talking about that I'm currently reading they talk about how they intentionally did not want the slaves I just enslaved to read they did not want them to have any 
access to land because they knew that any if you give them any little inch you give any little inch that the enslaved were going to rebel they didn't want to give any type of room for any type of rebellion even though we know that a lot of rebellion happened but still that just let you, I'm just trying to show you how they intentionally did this <laughs> like this was done with intention okay all in the name of money all in the name of having wealth all in the name of all of that you know it's, it's crazy and it's chaotic <sighs> but I, I let's move on but so as I was reading this book one of the things that 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 is a theme in this book is that it goes from freedom time to slavery time freedom time to slavery time and as we get you know further in the book it switches you know it just switches back and forth from the past to the, to the current or whatnot and what's interesting about this book is there were some things that i sensed there was just spidey senses my intuition just felt like okay I, I felt in my bones that Jonah was not the, the, the father of them kids. I was not shocked. I was like, ain't no way. He always gone. And and then they kept making reference to how the kids look. And I was just like, mm, I wonder if that's really his, is his, really his children. And then it was, so it wasn't a shock to me that it was the reverend's children. And it was just so... That was not a shock to me at all. But it was a shock. And it, and it hurt my heart at the same time of what happened to Jonah. And I'm not going to go into detail about what happened to Jonah. Jonah, Because I don't want to give I, I don't want to give away too much. Because if you want to read this book, I don't want to give it away. But that really hurt my heart. Because Jonah was, a, was the epitome of the alpha black strong male. The way that the author described, the way that Rue, you know, looked at, the way that Rue looked at Jonah was just a strong alpha male. <sighs> I'm telling you, the things that that these enslaved enslavers did to really break down the enslaved was really fucked up. I'm just going to put it out there. It was fucked up. Okay. And that's why I understand why people don't like reading slavery books, slavery stories, slavery movies, because it's triggering and it makes you just not want to fuck with white folks. I'm just being real with you. It does. It makes you not want to, when you see, when you see, when you read this, and this stuff really happened. And then you have people walking around as if this shit don't exist. It's really fucked up. And you see, that's how I said this is a good book. This is a good book. But we know not everybody's like that. But it's like you have to be real. You have to like, in order for things to change, we got to look at the psychology of not only because we always focus on the psychology of, of the enslaved and how that impacts us in the black community now. But it's like, white folks need to look at the psychology of why y'all thought it was okay to, to enslave people, regardless of where they come from, because this is a global thing. You know, racism came out of, you know, slavery. But this is a global issue, all, all in the name of freaking money, you know what I mean? And it's like, you got to look at the psychology of why people back then justified this behavior people that were supposedly him humanitarians people that were supposedly religious and in the church justifying slavery fighting for it all in the name of money all in the name of money of making money you know and the and the black slave was the most lucrative the cheap labor was the most lucrative they even in the book that I read it, it talked about. Even though I'm not, I'm, I'm talking about a whole completely different book, but it, I'm just, it goes hand in hand. They talked about how three, three of uh, white men equals one black as far as the work labor. It, it's it's really deep. I I gotta stick to one thing. I gotta stick to one thing. Okay. It's just really interesting, man. 
But back to this story. The main character, <laughs> the main characters was Maybell, which is the midwife. She was the healer in the in the at the plantation. You know, she made sure she you know she nursed everybody. She you know as far as making sure that they were you know able to work. She took care of everybody. You know, she you know looked after the mo the the mothers, the women when they were pregnant and. She she get uh she helped labor not help actually she helped bring the babies into the world the mothers labored but she helped bring the 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 babies into the world okay she was a midwife so her role was very important you know in regards to when you look at you know the work you know because slaves would look at as work as the as the there were the workhorses you know that's how they viewed that's how they viewed the enslaved that that's the money that's the worker so we got to make sure that they're making babies we got to make sure that everybody is 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 well enough to work you know so her role was very important and she had a daughter named Rue and her daughter watched her because the intention was for her to take on the role of her mother as she gets older and then there was Verena, the the the, the enslaver's um, daughter. She was she was supposed was supposed to be the heir because her 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 brothers died, so she was the only child that was alive. But as you see in the story, things changed. Man, I'm telling you, at the end of the at towards the end of the book, that's when everything comes out. You just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's just like oh my goodness. <sighs> but at the same token, I did not like Farina, but at the same time I felt bad for her because things happened to her. Her mother was so cold and so distant. Oh, and there's Mado. Mado. Oh my gosh. They talk about at the end of the book, they talk about her story. And how she came, she was one of the enslaved that came literally from Africa. <sighs> when you look at these stories, her children were taken away from her, and she was the she was the one that ended up raising. I mean, she ended up being the mother figure, and she was the school teacher. Um, she was the school teacher. And she was, you know, she nursed the, you know, the enslavers' children and things. She took, she took care of them. And that's why, as a mother, it's so important for me personally to be there one-on-one -on -one with my daughter. Because I know that there are so many people before me that did not have that opportunity. So... I wear that that being there with my child like a badge because not in the sense of better than but in the sense of paying homage to you know not you know just you know really doing my very best as a mother because there are so many of our people that did not have that opportunity because of the injustices the inhumane inhumane ways that they treated the enslaved it was just like oh my goodness even when it comes to breastfeeding you know what I mean a lot of the enslaved played the role of you know nursing the enslavers children so their babies didn't get their babies didn't get you know get what they were really supposed to get from their mamas because their mothers had to 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 put other children's needs before theirs so when you think about that you think about all of these things from a physical standpoint from a mental standpoint from an emotional standpoint you know it's very important for mothers to and children to be able to connect with each other it's so it, it, even if you don't breastfeed it's still important, just that, that closeness. You know what I mean? And just having that snatched away. <sighs> that was really, that was just really, ooh, this is a lot. 
but what I, I one of what I did admire about it is that it showcased how it showcased how that healing nature is in our blood, is in our DNA. The the land is in our DNA. You know, us being able to work the land, connect with the land is in our DNA. Being skilled in so many things is in our DNA. Being able to make something not, not, nothing into something is in our DNA. Getting scraps, getting leftover scraps and making it taste good, even though <laughs> that is not things that we necessarily need to eat right now. But, you know, they, just being able to just be resilient and just just come still regardless of anything just make just being able to just bloom regardless of what comes our way as a people regardless of where you live regardless of where you live globally we have that ability to do that and that's just wow oh and then there is the <laughs> the myth the the reverend I done forgot his name, Lord. I done forgot his name. What is his name? Reverend, um, a is it Abel? I believe that's his name. Red, man. You know, one of the things that, that's interesting about Rue and about, um, I'm about to go find his name so I can make sure that I'm not saying the wrong name. So let me make sure, cause I, you know, I read a lot of books, so I don't want to make sure that I don't uh, get the wrong. I should have this written down so I can stay on track. Bra Abel, that's what they call him. He's the the minister. The Bra Abel, yeah, that's his name. Yeah, he's a trip. He is a trip. His behavior is not shocking. We see it now in the church. <laughs> His behavior is not shocking. You portray yourself one way and then you another way. And that's not to say that we are not all human and that we don't have our shadow side to us. But it's just interesting to say the least. But it's not interesting because it's something that is just common even today. And what's interesting about Bro Abel is that he could have passed for a white man. But he chose not to which is interesting and so but that gave him the ability to do what he was able to do as you if you read the book you'll understand what i'm talking about the cup him being lighter hue and being able to pass i think helped you know gave him the ability to do to move the way he did um what's also interesting is you know how the people in the community after slavery was over how the people in the community started to not have faith in in the more natural ways of healing and they started to have more faith in praying and in religion and you saw that transformation happening when you looked at rue who was the the healer she was the you know the the one everybody looked to for you know all type of healing work and also for root work so it came a time where they started to not trust her. They treated her so horribly, so harshly, even though there have been many times where she saved their lives, where there have been times where she helped nurse them back to health. There's been times where she nursed their loved ones back to health. And it's just very interesting to see that it just showed the transition of, of people having more faith in religion and not having in religion in the standpoint of what was given to them by the enslaver versus you know that that side of us that is connected to you know our roots you feel me it's just very interesting seeing that play out and yeah there's a lot that happens but also the the, the dynamics between mothers and daughters from the standpoint of looking at Rue and her mother and also from Farina and her mother. That was also interesting. Farina's mother was, oof, she seemed like she was a piece of work. If you, if she was a real character, like a real person, I mean, very cold, 
You know, Verena, like she, she act like she didn't want Verena. She was just very cold, and you, you saw that she was mothered more by Mondo, the, 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 the person that you know took care of her, and the person whose children were taken from her. Yeah, so that was that was that was sad to see, you know, or sad to read. But also, just looking at how, um, well, there was something else that I wanted to say in regards to Miss Maybell and her daughter Rue, Rue and May, and it. You see, I can see. It reminds me of the dynamics that black mothers and daughters have at times. You see where it stems from. You know, there wasn't really, there was, there was, there was a level of, there was a level, a level of mothering, but not to the degree that I felt like Rue really needed. It was more so about surviving and there was a lot of dismissiveness um, that I noticed with May, Miss Maybell, dismissiveness in her daughter's pain. And but I understand that it was in, it was due to the times, um, and she was also you know a healer to many. She was, it was just a lot. It just was low key sad and just even, you know, I, I forgot to mention the father, Miss Maybell's husband and Rue's father. He was he was enslaved at another plantation at a neighboring plantation so he didn't even live with them or anything you know they had to, you know they had to get it in where they could fit in so and the way that he ended up being killed was horrible and then you and that's where you begin to understand why Rue did what she did in regards to Verena it was almost like she was trying to punish Verena for what happened with her father which I would have been very angry too like and it just reminds us also of I mean well it reminds me I should say of how white women can and they're privileged and they can say any and everything and people believe them and just go off of that and it wasn't the truth it's just a lot yo it's just a lot as you can see it's just a lot there's so much in this freaking book that just like oh what I did love is that they talked about there was just certain things that they talked about the uh, in, in regards to the practices the healing practices and um, the like they talked about waste beads to the like that I like the, it was just I just really was I just really like the the details that was done for this book. Um, there was a lot. There's a lot of symbolism too, with animals, with the animals. It's there's so much. What I may end up do doing, excuse me, do. <laughs> what I may end up doing is doing some Patreon topics based upon this, which just means this is that's more exclusive. Um, content so if you're interested in joining my patreon you can do that i'll have the link in the description and i'll definitely be doing some more um more because this video is almost at 30 minutes and i need to go um i need to go yeah but there's just a lot i love the book though it was good i would love to see this as a movie or as a series so that's all that I wanted to share for now. If you were offended, I don't care because that just shows that you need you need to you need to look at the realities of the world. But I hope that this gives you some insight on my perspective of what I saw. This is just a book review. This is not an analysis, okay? This is a book review and how I felt about it. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone to read. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. And you have a great day. And make sure you're, you're subscribed. And go to 
my Instagram, Infinite Nature Number One, Twitter at Infinite Nature Number One, Tumblr, Infinite Nature, and you can go to Facebook at Infinite Nature if you want to stay connected with me on social media. So have a great day, guys. See you later.